Okay, well, some things don't need an introduction, um, and this is certainly one of those devices. Uh, so this is going to be a unboxing, a review, and we'll look at some speed tests of Thunderbolt 2 and also Thunderbolt 1. Um, so behind this, you can just about see it, is the 5K iMac, uh, late 2015. So that will carry the Thunderbolt 2 standard, which this currently supports, and also will support downgrade to Thunderbolt 1 which I will try on my MacBook Pro 2012 Retina Edition so we're going to get both sides of it I don't think there's going to be much speed difference in it I've not noticed nothing significant but we'll certainly have a look into it okay guys so we're going to unbox this now and we'll walk through everything now please bear in mind I have actually used this because of the way it delivered I just wanted to test it before I you know sent it back just for example so um, some of the wires will be slightly messy but this is not how it will arrive. So we'll open it up here. So one of the little pull tabs, there's a bit of tape here, uh, which if you obviously just cut, it will obviously resolve itself. So if we just pull the tab out like a traditional box. Cool, so as you open the box, you're presented straight away with the actual device itself, which is a lovely metal chassis. So we're gonna put that aside for a second, as I always leave the best bit until last. And then we'll look at the box content itself. So that's literally it. Pull this little box out and the box is empty. So going forward, uh, this is what you get. So this is the package you get inside. So what I'll do is drop the camera down so we can get a closer look at that. Cool. So this is your quick install guide. Apparently you get in there, but not found one. So basically this is your quick install guide printed straight on the box, which is pretty cool. So let's face it, most geeks don't read instructions, they just try it and it works. So, as a little technique, so number one for the device itself, you have to take the metal plate off in order to get access to where the wires need to go. Uh, number two, obviously you plug the power in, which is normal. And number three, you plug it into the relevant computer you want to use it on, so mine will be the 5K Mac in front of you, we'll show you in a minute. And number four, uh, you seal it back up. So as you can see on here, uh, you do actually get a couple of serial numbers, which won't, won't show all of them, but uh, you get the GD Backup Pro and Image Backup Manager. So both of them are very much the same, but one is for Windows and one is for Mac. So let's get this opened up and have a look. So on the tab itself, and again, we'll just cover that up for you. So just a couple of things. So Windows and Thunderbolt manual, so you can get the manuals for it. Again, nobody reads these. Uh, Lassie.com register and the manuals again um, and just some product support if you never need it which is nice so opening up the package itself uh, you do literally get every connector you could think on in here so first things first you get a thunderbolt cable which is really good of them to include because they are very expensive cables now you probably pay for that in the price um, but overall guys this is not actually a bad cable it's not a bad quality cable it's one meter long it's fairly thin, which compared to my other Thunderbolt cable is actually quite thick and sturdy. But again, does the job. Not notice any speed differences between the two cables, which is always cool. So for the purpose of this video, we will use the default one, which is included. So put that aside. So obviously you get a three pin uh, kettle lead, as we call it here. Mine's obviously three pin because we're in the United Kingdom. So that's mine. Also, got the USB free data transfer, so it looks like an old fashioned printer one, but yeah, I'll never use that because I don't have a PC, I only use Thunderbolt, that's why I bought it. The other one is for European leads, so you do literally get every kettle lead you can think of, so European one. Um, and also a free pin, which one, I'm not 100% sure which one that is for, but anyway, those are those. Um, and you do get this power brick, which is not the most prettiest one in the world, but in the nicest way. I won't see it because it's all behind my Mac anyway, so it's not a problem. And you do get a nice little LED blue light, which indicates there is power being received, uh, which helps, you know, if you try to diagnose it. So, that's that. As you can see, the power output is 12 volts and 5 amps, so nothing really. And a great deal of things. So, that is the box content. Uh, there's nothing under this flap, it's just there to keep the cables neat. So, those cables can go back in, because I'm never going to need those, and also... USB free cable. So pop those back in the box and we'll pop that to one side. So the device itself comes in two pieces of foam, which obviously keeps it in place. Put all these cables to the side there. Um, and yeah, we'll have a quick look here. So, removing both of these, 
provides the actual bucket box itself. So, if we just take the plastic off itself, so we can see the device, I'll have a quick look around and show you what's what. So, straight away you'll see it is for a device, it's a metal device, which is straight away, that's the quality I expect when I buy from an Apple store, it's the quality items. So straight away it's going to be no, it's going to be good. Um, these two here, they're both LED lights, so when the hard drives are going, these flash, you know, if they're RAID 0, they flash both at the same time, because it's been striped, so they pretty much are exactly the same. Um, and here is your power button, which is a really solid build quality. On the back there, as you can see, you've got a fan. Now again, you don't actually ever hear this, which is always nice. Uh, you've got the Lacy brand there, and designed by Neil Paulson, which is good. Um, and this is the little design itself. Now I'll show you this in a second, but that's what hides the wires. And the front of the device itself, this is where you get access to your drive. So I'll just show you very quickly how to do that if you ever need to. Uh, so you simply pull forward like that. That brings, springs it out, and then you just pull from the bottom. Oh, I need to have one hand spare. And this pulls the drive out. Now they're already included in the caddy. You don't need to put them in for yourself, which is nice. Uh, as you can see, they are both Seagate drives, which is always nice. So Seagate I prefer over Western Digital personally, just because I've never had any issues. A desktop hard drive, um, yeah, pretty good. So these are both four terabytes in size, and those jobs the jobs done. So you have a warranty seal here, so you can't remove these drives and put your own SSDs in without voiding the warranty. But for the purposes, I'm quite happy with the raw storage I have if I stick with the hard drives itself. So you literally slide it back in, so line it up, slot it back in, and you again, hold from the bottom, push in. Oh, I do. I think I might have got it the wrong way, actually. Tell a lie. It might be the other way around. So we'll try again. Ah, there we go. So that's the right way around, guys. So the, the actual silver bit where all your branding faces that way so there we go we've learned something new today and again exactly the same on here they're both the same drives um that's it turn it on but by default well one thing i actually found quite interesting with this is when you plug it in for the first time with power only and not actually plugged it into the mac it won't actually come on you'll press it and it'll blink and it'll stay off this will only come on if it's plugged into some kind of data connection so when i put the thunderbolt in it will straight start straight away which is cool so one thing I really like about this is the actual feet. They put a lot of effort into designing the feet. So the feet are quite sturdy, as you can see, and quite a groovy looking one. It's quite abnormal, but it looks great. Um, and they feel great. So apparently that helps with the vibration, which is great because these do vibrate. So looking at this panel itself, I'm just going to drop the camera down so you can get a better picture of this, guys, because this bit is one of the main bits about this unit. It is a really cool bit of kit. And the design of this bit, uh, it's really good. So this silver panel here is there to hide the wires, but it's also a second thing. It keeps the wires nice and safe. And apparently, if you ever trip up, it won't damage this device. So to get into this, you push this panel here forward. So you push it at the back, and then you push across, and then it brings it out. Now, it is a solid bit of metal. You can see here there's a bit of foam, which is nice. I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, you can see the reflection. A bit of plastic there, which is always nice. And it's a bit of metal there which is designed to keep that there. So we'll have a look uh, at the actual spec itself um, and we'll have a look. So it's quite hard to get on camera, but we'll try our best. So on here, ah, oh, there we go. So here is where, so this button here is a physical click button. It's quite a big click button just to make sure you definitely want to do it. And this is where you have your options to select which one. So you will have to use a pin to select which one. Because obviously as soon as you select a new RAID, it will format it and RAID it for you. So mine will always be on fast, because I don't want it to be on safe, because that's why I have a secondary NAS, which backs up everything just in case. Uh, so fast is RAID 0, so that will be striping the data, which is the quickest way to transfer this speed. So it splits it as soon as it hits the hard drives. One goes one way, one goes the other way. So if it was one gigabyte file, for example, 500 meg would go to hard drive 1, and 500 meg will go to hard drive 2. The other one is safe, which is RAID 0, which is mirroring. So it RAID, it copies both sets of data onto both drives to mirror both of those pieces of information. 
And the other one is JBOD, which is just a bunch of disks. So you can have these run independently as four terabyte separate disks. Which again, if that's what you want to do, that's absolutely fine. So this bit stays alone. Uh, there is a little, these are little LED lights which show, but again, you'll never see it because the panel is always closed. Looking at the ports themselves, as you can see, the top one there, blue, is your USB 3, and the other two there are your Thunderbolt ones. So you can use either one, top or bottom, doesn't matter. Uh, I use the bottom just for simplicity. Um, and then you have your power. Um, so it is a little brick outside which obviously saves the space. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to get the cables now and we're just going to plug them in and get it ready so I can shut the panel and literally start. So the first one we're going to do is put our power in. So we just feed that in there and pop that power in there like so. It's a snug fit. It's not a great deal of room to breathe but that's fine. Now the one thing I've learned is there's a little... Uh, bit of plastic here which dictates where the cables need to go and needs to go in between there so then I don't get damaged and then we'll use the Thunderbolt cable uh, which I will use for now that's the one I've got already plugged into my Mac so I'll be moving my Mac so you have to line these up because sometimes they're a bit fiddly but once it's in it's in so there we go nice and snug so now you get your panel Lift the cables up a little bit, just so they're away from the bottom. Line that in, that clicks behind there. Uh, push it in there, and just slide. Um, and that is it. So quite a firm grip there. As you can see, it moves them to the little hard drives the cells. And that's that. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is set it up. I'm gonna turn it on for the first time. So I'll do it now. So I'm just gonna plug this in on one of the extension leads down here. And uh, hopefully you'll get the experience of what it does straight away. So, I've turned the power on. There you go. There's the little blue light, which indicates it's starting. There is another two lights on the top, which I'll get. That is when the hard drives are then kicking in. So at the moment, the system's booting. Um, and there you go. There's the two LED lights, which indicate the hard drive is ready. They spin and they once they're up to speed, it will then go on my Mac. So that's the product itself. What we're going to do now is I'm going to get it on the Mac, show you a little bit around, uh, and then I'm going to actually show you the speed test results on Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 1, because obviously there's two generations. One's 10 gigabits per second, and the other one is obviously 20 gigabytes per second. So quite a difference in bandwidth. I don't think there's a lot of difference in speed between my MacBook Pro and the 5K Mac, but we'll certainly find out, guys, and we'll have a look at that in terms of on the actual Mac itself. So, we'll catch you in a minute. Okay, guys, so we're going to run a speed test now on the Let's See Thunderbolt 2 display, uh, unit. So, as you can see, it's over here 8 terabytes, 5.243. So, what we're going to do, we're going to run this and we're going to select Let's See Drive. So, Let's See, and we'll just choose it there, and we're going to run a speed test on it. And see how it performs. So, as you can see, I'm getting uh, this is transferring one gigabyte file, and as you can see, the speeds are pretty impressive. They're quite consistent, which is always nice. And that's that. We're going to stop it now and run a five gigabyte, so a bit more stress on there, and see how it performs. Uh, so, like I said, this can go even faster. This is the fastest I can get it to go, which is on the Thunderbolt 2 interface, which I'm more than happy with because on a hard drive, normally I get nowhere near this. Uh, this might be a tad slower than normal, just because as well I've got iMovie running in the background which reads directly from this. But straight away I can see this is pretty good speed. So that's the speed currently I'm having on my Thunderbolt 2 unit. Uh, so what I'm going to do, the next test I'm going to show you, is actually going to be running off my MacBook Pro uh, with Retina Display from 2012, which carries the Thunderbolt 1, and we'll see how it matches up to these kind of speeds. Okay guys, so we are now on the MacBook Pro uh, 2012, uh, so this is the Retina edition, so this was the first Retina MacBook Pro they released, and we're going to have a speed test on this, so this is connected to exactly the same unit, exactly the same Thunderbolt port, uh, but obviously this carries the Thunderbolt 1 standard, so we're going to see if there's any difference whatsoever on this by running the speed test now, um, and this is using this, so let's have a quick look what we're going to get. So on the last one we was about 320, so as you can see, uh, we're pretty much probably going to be exactly the same. Uh, we actually get a slightly bit more on the read, but that might be due just to the fact that something was running on there. 
Uh, so as you can see, guys, there's actually not a great deal to it when you actually run them both at the same time. Um, you can see they both get good results, uh, which is always good. So there isn't that much difference, I believe, between Thunderbolt 1 and Thunderbolt 2. It's, it's purely the bandwidth, so I could use more Thunderbolt devices piggybacking off my uh, little AC uh, drive set there compared to what I could on this one because it's just got that 10 gigabytes a second bandwidth there. Uh, so that's been a look, guys, in the C Fun 2, bit it's called the T Big Thunderbolt 2 unit. Um, as I say, mine was 8 terabytes. I got mine for around 499, but that was with employee disco. Uh, overall, guys, it is a spot on unit. Um, I, I, I'm really enjoying it. You get a lovely icon with it as well, which is always nice. Um, it's just very, very quick, which is always good to have as storage locally. Um, and yeah, guys, as I say, I'll put a link in the description where I got it from. And please uh, let me know how you feel about it.